Hey everyone, today's video is on mesenteric ischemia. So this name is not as explanatory as some other names we've looked at in the past. Of course, ischemia just means a lack of blood flow, but a lot of organs have mesentery. So what, what are we talking about here? If you hear the term mesenteric ischemia, they are referring to poor blood flow to the small intestine specifically. Uh, if you recall, if we think about blood flow to the bowels in general, looking at a sagittal view of the aorta, there's three unpaired blood vessels in the abdomen, the celiac trunk, the SMA, and the IMA. If you think about what they feed, the celiac trunk is going to feed this primarily the stomach as well as those other four gut organs like the liver and the spleen. The SMA primarily feeds the small intestine and a little bit of the proximal colon. And then the IMA feeds the remainder of the colon that's not fed by the SMA. So remember, mesenteric ischemia is an issue with blood flow to the bowel in the SMA distribution, which is small bowel or small intestine. What it is not is bad blood flow to the colon via the IMA. And that's actually a very important distinction because as you'll find out in this video, mesenteric ischemia is a big, big deal. It is a four alarm emergency, absolute surgical emergency. Uh, if you do not give these patients early diagnosis and treatment, they will almost certainly die. In fact, even with appropriate treatment, most series quote a mortality rate of around 50 to 60% for mesenteric ischemia, even with treatment. And that is so high compared to most other conditions when you think about modern medical therapy. Uh, on the other hand, ischemic colitis is much better tolerated. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the colon's dispensable. So if there's a problem, you just take it all out and then you're kind of fine. Uh, and then, of course, the small bowel, not only do you need it for absorbing food long term, but as it dies, it uh, leads to profound, profound sepsis that will kill the patient. So if you accidentally call mesenteric ischemia ischemic colitis, which does happen, is a common point of confusion, that patient might get very different care uh, than, the, than what they would actually need for their mesenteric ischemia. And that delay in treatment could very well cause their death. So again, very important, mesenteric ischemia, small bowel, ischemic colitis, colon specifically, and you really need to be careful with your words in this disease. All right, so mesenteric ischemia has four main types. Um, and to help you understand that, we'll draw the little diagram here. Pretend this is a loop of small intestine. And of course, all organs, not just small intestine, but small intestine as well, has blood flow flowing into it and blood flow flowing out of it. You need both of these to have a healthy functioning organ. So the first type is arterial embolic disease. That's when an embolus, which is usually a clot, but I guess could be something else, uh, comes from somewhere proximal in the bloodstream and lodges in the artery in a way that prevents blood flow to the underlying bowel. There's also arterial thrombotic disease where you already have pre-existing plaque within your SMA. And remember, where does plaque form? It forms at turbulent flow points in arteries. So these takeoffs of the SMA, IMA, celiac, et cetera, off the aortas are great places for turbulent flow to happen. So patients, especially vascular paths, will frequently have some pre-existing vascular disease at the SMA takeoff. If this plaque ruptures and you get a focal thrombosis that can cut off your blood flow, that's arterial thrombotic mesenteric ischemia. Of course, you can also have good arterial flow, but a venous occlusion, right? That leads to bowel congestion and the bowel will eventually die as well because there's no room for the new well oxygenated blood to flow into the bowel. That's venous mesenteric ischemia. And then finally, you can have perfectly good functioning vessels, but there can be no blood flow going through those vessels. For example, in somebody who's um, in severe septic shock or uh, hemorrhagic shock, just for whatever reason, has poor blood flow coming through those arteries. Even if they are adequate, um, the, the intestine can still die. So to review, there's two types of arterial. This is the most common. It makes up around 70% um, of acute mesenteric ischemia. Remember, embolic, where there's a clot that comes from proximal and lodges in the right place to cut off blood flow to the intestine. There's thrombotic, where there's pre-existing disease that then ruptures and causes a focal thrombosis. There's venous, which is where we have that outflow obstruction, so the bowel can't get good flow. And then this NOMI term is what we talked about last. That stands for non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. That's where there's no occlusion in the artery, no occlusion in the vein, 
but for whatever reason, low cardiac output, septic shock, et cetera, et cetera, there's just not enough oxygenated valve getting to the intestines. And it's important to know these four types because, of course, there's going to be very different treatment uh, depending on the underlying cause. But before we get to treatment, we have to diagnose the problem. And remember, like we talked about, diagnosis is critical. It needs to be early and it needs to be accurate uh, to give your patient a fighting chance with this severe problem. So what can we lean on for our diagnosis? In the history, um, not necessarily as great for diagnosing. It can give you a good sense of potentially what might be causing your mesenteric ischemia. Uh, for example, a patient might have AFib, uh, which is the most common cause of embolic mesenteric ischemia. Um, they could have a history of other sorts of embolic diseases. It could be a vasculopath, which would make you think about chronic mesenteric ischemia. Um, they could have a history of thrombophilia or a pro clotting disorder. Um, they might have a history where they say, you know, every time I eat, I have a lot of belly pain. And so I don't eat as much. I have weight loss. That's a classic picture of chronic mesenteric ischemia, where every time they eat, the arteries dilate to try to bring more blood flow to the bowel, but a fixed stenosis upstream doesn't allow that much blood to go through. Uh, and then finally, other things that make you think of vasculopath, smoking, et cetera, could clue you off in the history. Physical exam, this is where we really have a buzzword, which is pain out of proportion. So pain out of proportion to your physical exam. What does that mean? Uh, that really means you're doing your exam and the patient is telling you they're just having horrible, horrible belly pain, but you go to push on them and they're not really showing uh, signs of peritonitis like rebound or guarding, et cetera. For more information on that, you can watch our abdominal exam video. Um, you're like, this doesn't make sense. They're telling me they have all this pain, but when I push on them, they actually don't have that much. Uh, and the reason for that is the pain they're experiencing is an ischemic pain. You may also have seen pain like this in peripheral vascular disease, for example, where patients have either rest pain or claudication. They have this burning, really terrible pain, um, but it doesn't matter what you're doing externally, pushing on their calf, et cetera. That doesn't change the pain. Um, so when it's early in the disease, before the bowel has completely died, necrosed, et cetera, in ways that would cause peritonitis, that will have this really severe pain that is, quote, out of proportion to the exam. So if somebody's got a lot of belly pain, or especially if they have that along with a significant leukocytosis, um, your suspicion for acute mesenteric ischemia should be very high. And then finally, um, how do we diagnose it? And the definitive test is going to be CT, as it is in so many other contexts. And it's important that your CT have IV contrast to look at the vessels. Um, so it's a CT of the abdomen pelvis with IV contrast. It could also be a CTA or CT angiography of those vessels. Um, that will give you a little bit better um, picture of the blood flow, um, especially in those more chronic disease states. And then finally, there's a couple other hints that we can get uh, when it comes to diagnosing the different types of disease. So once you've gotten your CT scan, um, it should give you a good sense of whether it's arterial or venous. Um, you can also get a sense of if, if there's something called jejunal sparing. And jejunal sparing means that you have two options. In one option, your entire small bowel is affected. And in the other option, part of it is spared. Part of the proximal jejunum is not affected while all the rest of the bowel is. And if you have this jejunal sparing, that's pretty um, diagnostic for embolic arterial disease. Because as you remember, remember those branch points of the vessels, if you have a thrombotic disease, that's going to happen right at the root of the SMA where there's that turbulent flow, and that will infect the entire small bowel. However, an embolus that's shooting down has no reason to really stop here at the mouth. And it usually shoots down until maybe that first branch point. So you get a little bit of blood flow to the jejunum. So you get maybe 10, 20 centimeters of sparing before the small bowel is affected. So jejunal sparing suggests embolic, whereas total uh, small bowel being affected suggests thrombotic disease. All right, so we've made our early diagnosis and we need to treat the patient. So there's two main steps and they aren't always in this order, but generally I want you to think about one, restoring blood flow. That's obviously the underlying problem is a blood pr flow problem, hence the ischemia in the name. But two, you have to control sepsis because this lack of blood flow has often killed off or caused to perforate some of your bowel. And um, that is actually going to kill the patient faster than not having blood flow to the bowel. So 
if your patient has an acute abdomen peritonitis really sick, they need to go to the operating room and you need to cut out the dead bowel to control that sepsis. And then you need to think about restoring your blood flow. But either way, first thing, your patient's diagnosed with mesenteric ischemia on CT scan. The first thing you need to do is start them on IV heparin, prevent that clot or um, embolus from propagating. And this can obviously happen faster than any sort of procedure, any sort of surgery. So number one, heparin, heparin, heparin. Don't hold it because there's going to be a surgery. They need to be on heparin. Um, restoring blood flow to the bowel is an absolute priority. And then once this is going, you're setting up the operating room to either control sepsis if they have an acute abdomen or there's been perforation or to set up for other procedures to more definitively restore blood flow. All right, I think we beat that to death. So, uh, well, actually to go back. So obviously universally, we have to restore blood flow and control sepsis. And universally we give heparin. It's gonna be variation based on type, which procedure we do to restore that blood flow. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So if you have arterial embolic mesenteric ischemia, remember this is a problem with the arterial flow caused by an embolus from something proximal, then you do what's called an embolectomy. Now, the details of these different procedures are more the purview of vascular surgery than general surgery. So we're just going to talk about this in big strokes. But basically, you make a cut in the SMA, pass a catheter with a balloon in it up the cut, get it past the thrombus and use that to pull the, or sorry, the embolus. You use that to pull the embolus out of the, out of the structure and you sew it up. So you can do this because it's usually a mobile clot and, um, then that's your way to pretty rapidly restore blood flow to the bowel. Now, if you have arterial thrombotic disease, you can't just go in there with a balloon and pull out a chronic occlusion or a bad ulcerated plaque, because even if you pull out the, the clot associated with that plaque, that plaque's still there, still going to cause issues. So the two main ways to deal with this are to either do a bypass where you just uh, sew in a graft either from the aorta to the SMA or maybe even retrograde from the iliac arteries to the SMA to restore your blood flow past that occlusion, or um, you can do a stent. And the stent can either be antegrade or retrograde. And what I mean by that is if the patient's really sick, they're already in the OR getting bowel resected. You can actually go retrograde. You can stick a needle in the SMA, pass the occlusion, pass a wire up retrograde and do your stent that way. Or if the patient's not in the OR and maybe you're treating either chronic ischemia or they just happen to not be sick enough to have uh, an acute abdomen, you can try to wire an antegrade wire from wherever you get access, usually the groin, <coughs> excuse me, up, enter the SMA from the aorta, and then place the stent that way. If you have venous disease, you are very rarely going to be doing any procedures. Often this has a more occult, um, kind of insidious course than arterial disease. And when the patients present, they have this kind of off-again, on-again abdominal pain, and really, you just give heparin and wait, and usually the patients just get better because there's more venous collateral options. And you're not cutting off all oxygenated flow to the bowel. So usually venous does not need a vascular um, intervention. Of course, sometimes it's going to require a gen surge intervention to cut out dead bowel if it's progressed that far. But generally, for gen surge perspective, we're thinking heparin, maybe a role for lytics in certain patients, but that's getting a little advanced. I wouldn't worry too much about that. And finally, the non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. Of course, if there's no occlusion, there's no procedure to do, and all you're doing is resuscitating these patients, making sure they have adequate fluid, adequate blood, you're treating sepsis, etc. If you restore good flow to those bowels, they should begin to heal and do okay. All right, so brief review. Mesenteric ischemia is a bad problem. It implies uh, impaired blood flow to the bowel in the SMA distribution. It requires early diagnosis and emergent management, which hopefully you have a better understanding of after this video. Remember that basic management involves restoring blood flow to the bowel. Uh, don't forget about starting that heparin early and then managing sepsis caused by dead intestines, which may require resections. And then there's the four types with their different procedures to manage. Remember you have your two arterial embolic that requires an embolectomy, thrombotic that requires a bypass, or a stent, venous that usually just requires anticoagulation, and non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia that uh, just requires resuscitation and treatment of the underlying cause.
All right, so that's all for today's video. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes only. Uh, these are not clinical advice, not used to diagnose or treat any disease. We'll see you next time.